They're made by my grandson, who lives in Honganui, mm -hmm. and he also makes the lip balm and yeah. beard balm. So did you get one, two, three, four, five of those? I'm Helen Jew, and I'm 83. Okay, well, yeah. I think I might as well just take all of those. So it's hard to say what is the most important thing in life to me. You know, it's like asking, what kind of fruit do you like? Well, what's in season? My days are full. It might be something to do with climate change or it might be something to do with gardening, or having a, a jolly good look at the money system and how we can improve on that. Not everybody's a gardener, of course. That's in my DNA, it's part of what keeps me, keeps me grounded and also re-energizes me. Part of that creativity, that collaboration with the natural processes and I just love the magic of it. Other people have other skills, and that's where we come into this interdependence. We complement each other and learn to value the gifts that others have around us. People very often take the money system for granted. Local currencies have a role to play in building a, a regenerative community. The trading of goods and services that are produced locally can be facilitated with a currency that we design ourselves and manage ourselves. It can help to create more jobs locally and we can start looking at what we need to import from other areas and start thinking about, well, what could we do for ourselves? It binds us together as a community and helps us to build a local economy. People don't even know that there's anything other than the national currency. Let's have a look and see whether we can change the design and see if we can have something that is more sustainable and more just. So we have some exciting news. Uh, we might have a new member who's interested in joining. Oh. And she's really interested in the whole local currency. What a kind of So space. back in November, I proposed that we have a card and currency. Out of that, we formed a working group. It's almost all there. We just need confirmation from IRD as to the tax exemption requirements. Right. But the energy that they're putting into that, the interest that they're taking in it, they're doing their homework. It'll take a while, but you know, it's not as if we're doing something yeah. new. This is Alice. Oh, nice to meet you. You too. So oh. she'll be joining us for the meeting today. Good. I'll hand over to, to Jennifer now because uh, we'll, we'll get underway with the meeting and you'll soon catch up. Sure. Yeah. Good. Hi, Alice. I'm Jennifer. I'm a lecturer at uh, Victoria University of Wellington in software engineering and I teach around digital currencies. As a group, we've been considering tools there's all kinds of options available to us now and we just want to see what's going to be the best fit for local people. Another thing that we're looking at is um, time banking. Have you heard of time banking before? A little bit of research. Some say that if you want to start a local currency, start with time banking because you build your community. With time banking, the unit of account is counted in hours. So your hour is worth the same as my hour. It doesn't matter what we do for one another. It's not used for commercial activity, but it's used to build community and it does it beautifully. It can make such a difference socially and economically and environmentally too. And so I'm pretty excited about what this group can achieve uh, with this community. You know, we can't do it by ourselves. We engage the community. I, I just am so excited about the potential.
know, somebody asked me one day when I was showing them around the garden, uh, do you worry about when you can't do this? Because, you know, I've got a pretty busy garden too. And I said, oh, I think about it occasionally from time to time, but not for long. I just keep on living for today and planning for tomorrow. When I think about the future, I have some anxieties. There are people who perhaps focus more on the glass half empty, and I tend to sometimes fall into that as well. I find it really challenging to um, deal with technology. It's not me, it's not my language. I really struggle with it. I, I, I often have to call on help to, to get things sorted out. Can you hear me? Yeah, so, so as I mentioned when we, when we chatted, we've got this project going in, in Wellington uh, called the Wellbeing Protocol, and uh, we actually built some software and uh, got, a, got a local currency running. So uh, we'd love to invite you uh, and the working group down to Wellington, uh, give you a little, little demo. I'll say, um, I'm sure we'll be able to organise something. I'll get as many of the team to come down with me as we can. OK, well, great to see you, Helen, and so we'll, we'll sign off and uh, see you soon. OK, bye for now. involved in here is, is not doing away with the money system that we have. We need that. You're not going to use a local currency to buy your petrol or pay your power bill. People have woken up that we don't have to rely on this one monoculture of a currency exchange medium. Hi Helen, hi Luke. Great to see you. You too. Welcome, welcome to Wellington. Yes, so we'd love to talk a bit about our project, the Wellbeing Protocol. Yes. This is my colleague Benjamin. Nice to meet you. Okay, or yeah. come through. Okay. We're very excited and uh, privileged to, uh, to be able to talk to you about this project and hopefully get some feedback. What we're trying to do is to create micro economies uh, that empower communities. And, and the basic hypothesis is that if you give people the, the, the tools to help themselves, they will help themselves. Both from the front end, so the, the apps on our phones, we've now got pretty much penetration right down into low socioeconomic communities, but also at the, the back end, with blockchain and cryptocurrencies and, and that world, we now actually, it's far cheaper, easier to build technology platforms that support currencies and new forms of value transfer. So essentially we have the ability to create programmable money in a, in a much easier way. We ran a trial out in East Poirot in Cannons Creek and we called the, the coin, the token, the Cannon coin. So it's pretty easy if actually Ben shows you, shows you the app. If you think about it like, this is my wallet and this is your wallet. The blockchain on which Bitcoin is founded is a breakthrough. The, the, the software developments around all that just blow my mind. Wow. Your balance has gone up 10 cannons. And the really interesting thing, Helen, is that transaction, it wasn't processed by a bank or any sort of institution in the middle. It was actually a peer-to-peer -peer transaction, so it was broadcast out to this network of computers around the world who processes the transaction and, and validated it. So it's, it's, it, that's the, and that's where the blockchain and cryptocurrency comes in. I'm concerned about how the world's going to be for the next generation. I'm concerned about climate change and what legacy we're leaving for our kids. The fact that we depend so much on the supermarket and other supply chains has tended to cause some disconnection from nature, from where food comes from. If we're not connected with where food comes from, well, why would we bother looking after the earth, the soil and the planet? Everything comes in a bottle and, and can be fixed with technology. Well, I don't think so. They're useful tools, but they're not going to keep body and soul together.
a big part of why we wrote this book is that we we want to appreciate Helen. Helen has lived in Carterton for over 70 years, and during that time, she has been a pioneer in the time banking, green dollar, and urban gardening movements. Helen knows that a connected community is a resilient community. <laughs> You know, there's a saying in time banking, we have what we need if we use what we have. We have what we need if we use what we have. Connect all of our skills that they can share. It's the fellow yeah. we haven't been all together, together in a while. In a way, it doesn't really matter where we start and how we start, as long as we, we have a knowledgeable and committed team who are there for the long haul. I just want to leave this world having made a contribution to what will be a better place for my kids. I've never felt like giving up uh, on this because I just know how important it is. And I realise that, you know, I'm not going to be here forever. Goodness me. If I fall off the twig tomorrow, I'm sure that this is something that will happen. We'll get there.